Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the release of neurotransmitter. So, so far what we've done is we've seen how um, calcium uh, coming into uh, the cell upon an action potential arriving in the axon terminal leads to both the fusion of the docked vesicles which are in the readily releasable vesicle pool and also the liberation of the vesicles which are attached to actin uh, filaments uh, in the reserve vesicle. Pool. Okay, now what we want to do is look at the process of vesicle recycling, basically, um, and um, how you remove the membrane that you have now fused uh, with the plasma membrane from the plasma membrane. Okay, so this process is not hugely understood, but we will go through it as much as we can. So um, if we've got, in fact, I'll get another piece of paper. Okay, if we've got a uh, neuron, axon terminal, uh, which has just had a vesicle fused with it, so let's say we have our neuron axon terminal here, and we've now added in an extra bit of membrane which has come from this vesicle fusing with it. Okay, so let's say, um, let's highlight this piece of membrane. Let's say this piece of membrane, oh, whoops, let's say this piece of membrane here has been added in, basically. Okay, now, we want to take the, it's an over-exaggeration, of course, the amount of membrane that you've added in would nowhere near uh, be this large relative to the axon terminal. Uh, but let's say we want to remove this piece of membrane. Well, basically, what's going to happen is we're going to endocytose it through clathrin-mediated endocytosis. But there's another thing that we have to consider that the, um, the snare complexes that we put in here, let's think about the snare complexes. Let's say this is synaptobrevin 2 here, then we've got syntaxin um, 1 over here, and then we've got snap uh, 25 here, so let me color those in. Okay, so we'll have snap 25 in blue here. Okay, uh, we'll have synaptobrevin 2 in orange here. Okay, and we'll have uh, syntaxin 1 in red over here. Okay, so this is now what we call a cis snare complex. So this is a cis snare core complex. Okay, and the reason we call it a cis snare core complex is that cis means same, basically, on the same side. So they're on the same membrane now. Uh, so I'll just label them up in case, just to remind us all. So this is syntaxin 1 here, which was originally a T-snare, so it was originally on the plasma membrane. Synaptobrevin is here. Okay. Synaptobrevin is here. And then SNAP25 is here. Now, uh, what will happen is uh, when we endocytose this vesicle, either what's going to happen is that this entire complex may well end up in the vesicle now, or alternatively, it may well all stay in the plasma membrane. So these proteins, they can either all end up in the, um, in the vesicle, or they can all end up staying in the membrane, or they can be broken down. Basically, what we need to discuss is how we break these cis snare core complexes apart. And the order in which this happens uh, can be, well, it can be pretty varied. Either what can happen is that this cis snare complex can all remain in the plasma membrane when you re endocytose the vesicle. Alternatively, the entire cis snare complex can go into uh, the vesicle when we re endocytose it. Or we could split up the cis snare complex uh, before we actually re endocytose this, um, this membrane, and then we might just happen that the two T snares do actually remain in the um, plasma membrane and the V snare, synaptobrevin 2, um, let me just finish labeling that synaptobrevin 2, does go back into the vesicle membrane. Okay, so what we'll, we'll suppose that the entire cis snare complex is re endocytosed. So we're going to endocytose the vesicle membrane again, and let's suppose that the entire complex comes with us, basically, and we'll discuss the process of degrading it in a moment. Okay, so the entire cis-snare complex, I want to emphasize this, even though you think that these are uh, T-snares, i.e. they're the 
uh, they're restricted to the plasma membrane, some of them are going to be reuptaken when you re-endocytose the vesicle, because some of them won't have actually break broken down yet, and they'll still be in these cis-snare core complexes. Right, so this endocytosis process is done by a, proce uh, by a protein known as clathrin. So what will happen, basically, is that if this is the membrane here, clathrin will come and bind all over the place, okay? So here are loads of clathrin proteins, which I'll draw in um, blue, I think. No, actually, we've used blue as SNAP25, or denote it in green. Okay, so clathrin will bind to certain proteins in this membrane that tell it to come and bind to uh, that portion of the membrane. So there will be certain proteins in this membrane that will have um, uh, clathrin, um, well, will have clathrin binding sites. Uh, to which clathrin can bind. Now, when clathrin binds, it starts to polymerize, and it will start to basically pinch off a vesicle. Just the way that the clathrin starts to form, basically, form a great big polymer, will mean that uh, it wants to take on a certain shape, and the membrane will just have to fluidly mold around the shape that the clathrin polymer is starting to take on. So the clathrin polymerizes together and starts to form a sort of dome shape, basically. And it's still grabbing onto the membrane, so it's just going to pull the membrane, basically, into this dome shape, too. And eventually what will happen is this polymer will continue on growing, and it will sort of curve around like this. And then the membrane will just have to curve around with it, basically, like this. And you'll gradually pinch off a vesicle, basically. Okay, so this is the concept of clathrin-mediated endocytosis. This building of a clathrin polymer that sort of pinches off uh, a vesicle from the membrane. So this is clathrin-mediated endocytosis. Mediated endocytosis. Okay. So, uh, you're going to uh, re-endocytose the uh, membrane of the synaptic vesicle via clathrin-mediated endocytosis. Then what's going to happen is the clathrin is going to come off the vesicle. You're going to uncoat the vesicle. Because when, uh, when you originally finally do make this vesicle, what you'll have is a vesicle here from the membrane, and it will be utterly coated in this clathrin polymer that now takes on the same shape. So in green, this is the clathrin polymer all the way around this uh, vesicle that we've pinched off, basically, from the membrane. Okay, so that's not very useful. You can't really do anything whilst it's covered in clathrin like that. So if I just draw some arrows to show the order of this process. Okay, so then you'll have the membrane here. Okay, so what you'll then do is a process known as uncoating, uh, where you take the clathrin off from the vesicle, basically, and you just have the bare vesicle again. Okay, now that's the stage we've got to up here. So I've Basically, we've gone through all of this process, and we've now just got this vesicle. And we're supposing that the cis-snare complex is still assembled in that, um, in that vesicle. So it, it's just so happened that we've managed to re-endocytose this entire cis-snare complex. Okay, now what we want to look at is the process by which cis-snare complexes can be dissembled. And I want to stress that this doesn't just happen in these, in these um, re-endocytosed vesicles. It will happen in the membrane as well, and it will happen... Um, uh, yes, it will happen in those two places. Okay, so how do we take apart these cis-snare complexes? Well, basically, what happens is a protein known as SNAP binds to the snare proteins. So I'm going to draw this bigger, because that's a very small picture there. So let's have our vesicle here. Okay, and I will try, I think, to draw it in here. So let's say we've got our synaptobrevin 2 there, our SNAP25 there, and our syntaxin 1 here. So let me just color code them again. Okay. Yeah, and these are all these snare proteins. Now we're going to finally get to discuss uh, why they are actually called uh, snare proteins, basically. Uh, because we're finally going to see that they bind to the protein SNAP. And SNARE basically stands for SNAP receptor. So a protein is going to come along that is called alpha SNAP. So this is alpha SNAP. Okay, now AlphaSnap has a bunch of other names, which I will go through with you nice and gently. 
So this is alpha snap. Okay, so it binds to the cis snare complex and it binds to all of the snares basically. Okay, so these are called snares. Actually, do I want to draw it there? I might need this space. So these are called snares. Okay, and snares stands for, this stands for snap receptors. So they were named basically after these proteins, these snap proteins that they bind to. Now, alpha snap, let's discuss alpha snap. Okay, so what does alpha snap stand for? Well, alpha snap stands for alpha um, um, soluble NSF attachment protein. Okay, um, so alpha soluble, so the S stands for soluble, the N stands for another protein known as NSF, which we will see in a moment, and then AP stands for attachment protein. Okay, so the SNAP stands for alpha soluble, well, sorry, alpha SNAP means the alpha soluble NSF attachment protein. So SNAP itself just stands for the soluble NSF attachment protein. Right. Okay, now alpha SNAP has another name. It's also known as NAPA. Okay, so it can also be known as NAPA, and you may sometimes see it referred to as NAPA. And NAPA stands for NSF attachment protein alpha. So this is NSF attachment protein alpha. So basically you've taken the NAP from there, and then you've just put the alpha on the end. NSF attachment protein alpha. Okay, now, um, basically these names are giving you some good insight into what this protein is going to do. It's going to attach to NSF. So NSF is another protein uh, which stands for n ethyl malamide sensitive factor. Okay, so I'm going to draw this up here initially. So now, once the alpha snap has bound to our snare proteins here, what's going to happen is another protein is going to come and associate, and this next protein is NSF. So here comes NSF. Okay, so NSF comes and binds, and we'll have NSF in purple here. So in purple, we have NSF, which stands for n ethyl malamide uh, sensitive factor. So let me put this down here. So I'll write NSF's name down here. And then I'll tell you about what n ethyl malamide is. So this is n ethyl malamide, malamide, and then sensitive factor. So that also gives you some good insight into what this protein, uh, what this protein is sensitive to, i.e., what it might well be inhibited by. Uh, indeed, it's going to be inhibited by any pharmalamide. Right. So shall I tell you what NSF does, and then I'll tell you about how uh, any pharmalamide inhibits it. Right. So so far, we've had this quite simple setup. We've got this cis core snare complex in our uh, re-endocytosed vesicle, and we want to dissemble it. We've uh, bound this alpha snap protein to it, and then on top of alpha snap, uh, the NSF protein, the n ethylmalamide soluble factor, sorry, sensitive factor, has bound on top of that. Okay, now what NSF is going to start doing is it's an ATPase, basically. So it's going to start hydrolyzing ATP to ADP, an inorganic phosphate. So it breaks down ATP. Now, when you hydrolyze ATP, that releases energy. So what is believed to happen is that NSF is going to break down ATP, and it's going to use the energy to pull apart these uh, core snare complexes here. So this complex is believed to play a role in dissembling these cis uh, core snare complexes. And I want to stress that this is a controversial um, idea. This is an idea that is pervasive in the uh, community that uh, researches this, but it is not totally agreed upon. Um, it's a good model. And again, I re-emphasize that all science is, is models. So it's a model that makes sense, but it may well not actually fit with reality. Um, and in 10 years, as I say, this may not be valid anymore. But this is one of the best models that exists at the moment. Okay, so what the model says happens is that now...
these um, free snares are going to dissociate, basically. So they're going to come apart. So they'll sit apart now. So let me draw them in colour again. So here is um, syntaxin 1, I believe we were denoting in red. Here is snap 25 in blue. Okay, and here is snap de brevin 2 in orange here. Now, once you've dissembled the um, cis snare complexes, whether they're in the vesicle or the plasma membrane, what will now happen is this vesicle here uh, will uh, go on uh, to be refilled with neurotransmitters, so it can undergo direct recycling, so it will go back around the process. And you might say, but hang on a second, it's got these SNAP25 and these um, syntaxin-1 proteins in. It wasn't supposed to have those. It was only supposed to have synaptobrevin. When, in fact, what you find is that uh, these synaptic vesicles do, in fact, have uh, these other snare proteins in them as well. So the synaptic vesicles, although in, when I initially told the story, I told you the story of how they only have synaptobrevin in, that's not true. They do have SNAP25 in and syntaxin 1 in as well. I believe they're in, they're in much, much lower levels than um, the uh, synaptobrevin. I think synaptobrevin is generally expressed uh, with around 70 of them per synaptic vesicle. And uh, the other ones, one of them I think is around seven in each vesicle, and then the other's around two. Um, I think I'll pause the video and I'll just find out those numbers for you.